So I've got my uh, learning pouch folder. I just uh, changed it to today's date. It doesn't matter if you change it or not. But this is today's uh, work. And so what we've got so far in there is the PouchDB 4.0 JavaScript library that we started using last time and that basic HTML file. So let's go ahead and edit that pouch test file in Notepad. And to remind ourselves, let's run it. And let's run it in, um, in Chrome. Firefox, the version that we have built in, doesn't have some of the features that I want to use for debugging and testing this. We have a version like 37 or something, or 30 or 32 or something. And there's a newer version of Firefox. We don't want to waste time downloading it. So we're going to use Chrome a little bit as we test this. So I just uh, want to open it up again. Two days ago was so long ago, so I want to remember where we're at at the moment. So we can run that in Chrome. This is our project. Uh, if you click Show Classes, no classes appear, although the semblance of that table starts to appear. Uh, no classes appear, even though I might have said, well, this is permanent. It's saving into a, da a database and such. It is. But again, in our particular computers, uh, we have that deep freeze software which completely erases everything. That will not be an issue once we actually put it into our mobile device. Because if the person uh, reformats their device, yes, they'll lose their data. If the person deletes the app, yes, they'll lose the data, just like a regular app. Um, if we wanted to save that onto a user's account, that's obviously more complex, but that's doable with Pouch. So at the moment, I don't have any classes, but I'll just quickly add some data. And again, in the beginning, we're going we're gonna to be writing class 1, 2, 3, Android 1, Instructor uh, Smith. And then eventually, you're going to get tired of that and just fill it in with gibberish. That's fine. So this is class 1, 2, 3, Instructor 1, 2, 3, um, Title 1, 2, 3. I just want to remember how it works. Add a class. And now I've got a class in there. Add another class. Just I'm going to add a couple of fields of data in here. It doesn't have to be real. Uh, I just want to populate it with some data. So there's our whole functionality. That's what we ended up with last time. We're putting stuff into the database. I want to talk about then, of course, um, deleting stuff from the database uh, and updating stuff in the database. Those are the things we'll be covering. And then we'll be integrating that into our Android project. And uh, it almost works as is, but with a very big um, couple of lines, two lines that we have to change, but it's a big deal to change those lines. We'll get to that. So there's our project so far. And also to get a, uh, to, to keep our workflow, let's open up the um, inspector tools, the de development tools. Remember the keyboard shortcut is F12. If you open F12, you go over to the console. You might have some console output. And then also, if we wanted to look at the sort of the raw database, does anyone remember where we go in the development tools? Resources, that's right. So we'll be looking at console, and we'll be looking at resources. Not sources, resources. And and this is an indexed DB type of database internally at the lowest level. So it's part of that indexed DB. We've got one database so far. As soon as we load this HTML file, it creates it. Uh, and so we've got it. And then as we start to populate it with data, we can look in here in different ways. One of them, for example, is by sequence. And it shows there's the zero width item, the first item, the second item, key value one, two, three. There's class 1, 2, 3, 1, 1, 1, and 2, 2, 2. We can look at it also under document store. That's another way to look at it, under document store. Again, what uh, position is it in? What's the key, the CRN number? And then what, what are we else are we attaching to it? Um, the data itself and all of that. So what I want to do is 
uh, the first thing that we'll do is we will uh, worry about deleting uh, deleting a record. Uh, this again still comes from the example that I've got in the in the folder. And of course there's many ways to do this, perhaps some more elegant ways, but just for the moment to get it working, we're going to say that we're going to choose a particular class based on its CRN because only one class in the database, one object in the database can have that one CRN. Once we choose that one CRN, then we can press delete and it deletes it. So basic idea, but that'll require some programming. Because the way Couch, uh, PouchDB works is we have to reference a particular, um, we have to reference a particular um, ID within the database and deal with revision numbers. I believe we can see it. Uh, for example, yeah, if we look at our data uh, in resources by sequence, we can see this particular item. There's its title, instructor, and then something that says document ID revision in a really long, randomly generated string that specifies that this particular document uh, was revised and it has this uh, uniqueness. So if we want to delete uh, one of these records in the database, we can do so relatively easily by dealing with its unique ID, but when we want to update it, it's a little more tricky because we also have to cross-reference it in a sense with uh, an, existing, an existing record and its revision number. So we'll be doing those. I'm going to go back to Notepad. And what I want to do, the way we'll do this is we'll have a very simple uh, field that appears for us to select which, uh, which class to delete. So we'll do it like this. Back to Notepad. We'll go over to line Let's see, 59, or actually 67. What we've got on line 66 is that the, the table ends. We've got uh, line 59, the table begins, line 60 to 65. We've got that loop that takes every item from the database and then shows it on screen. And then the table ends on 67. So very simply, just to get this to work, uh, we're then also going to add the ability to, uh, for a person to select a class and then delete a class. So after line 67, uh, 66, add yourself a new line 67, and we're going to add a little bit more to the string. Remember, we've got the string that has got the whole um, table and everything that's visible. We're going to keep adding to it. So string or str plus equals quotes semicolon. We're going to keep adding to that. And we're going to say we've got an input box. So we'll write the input tag. And it has a type of text, so that's single quotes. Remember, be careful there, single quotes, because the whole thing is encompassed in double quotes, like we've seen previously. So it's an input type of text. And in order to access it via the JavaScript, it needs an ID. ID equals quotes, single quotes. We'll call this uh, delete CRN. So now we can uh, access the, um, the data inside of this input box with an ID, of course. We'll continue then after the input tag. We're going to create a button here. So we actually have the button tag. We don't we haven't used it that often. So just to compare, we'll use button slash button. Because technically we don't have um, we don't have jQuery. We don't have jQuery mobile. So we can't do that data role equals button. We don't have the jQuery mobile library to make that work. So we'll use just a plain old HTML button. Inside of the button, we'll, we'll call this uh, delete CRN. And then the button will have an onClick property. 
so that once the button is clicked, it will run, it will call the delete classes function. <coughs> Thank you. It's a button, it's got on click. Once you click it, it'll invoke delete classes function, which we haven't defined yet, which we'll do in a moment. My code so far. If you save this and run it for the moment, we'll see what it actually looks like. Again, not super elegant, but it'll get the job done for the moment. So if I run it, simply show classes, what then appears is an input field and a button. So we'll be able to type class 1 1 and then delete it. Doesn't work yet, of course, um, but this is where we're going so far. Once, if we're able to do this, then we'll be able to prettify it a little bit more later. But for the moment, that's our, our, our concept. So notice we were able to create. Um, with show classes, not only the table and such of data, but we were also on screen able to put in an input box and a button. We can put anything we want on screen, and we're doing that through the um, through the adding more to that string, which is then rendered div dot inner html. It's rendered. It's saying in that div our placeholder div then display the contents of string and then render it as HTML. So that's how we're able to then add an input button at that moment and a button to click, an input field, and then a button to click. For it to actually do anything, that's what's next. We'll jump back up to our JavaScript section and we'll define the function delete classes. Uh, my little time saver here, and actually aggravation saver, is that if, if I define a function, for example, here, I honestly forget it one second later, what did I call it? So I, you can select it and copy it here so that when we define it up on the JavaScript section, then uh, I just paste it, and I then don't have to remember, did I call it delete class, or classes, or delete my class, or whatever? I forget these things all the time. So copying and pasting. Uh, we can do this actually, we're already in the JavaScript section, let's do it after line 69, but before that uh, we've been writing comments at the end of our functions, haven't we, because we lose track of this. So at line 69 let's add a comment here, end of uh, show table of classes function. And then after that, we'll write, we'll begin to define our, our function. Function, delete classes, And so deleting the class is going to be based on the particular class number that the person inputs. So we will create a variable here in the function delete classes. We'll create a variable and we'll call it the class equals. We're going to see what the person typed into that box. So document dot get element by ID. And it's the element that we called delete CRN, which is right up here. So we created that input box, and it's delete CRN. And so we're saying let's access whatever the person typed in there, delete CRN. Specifically at the end, dot value. What they typed in, the value, which can be technically text or numbers. 
let's get that from uh, whatever they typed. Okay, so the way this will work is on the next line we use um, we use a pouch DB construct here to access a particular record um, in question and then we can remove it. So db.get and that's got open and close parentheses semicolon. This works in two, it has to work in two ways. One is, let's get a particular record in question from the database. Previously, we got everything using db.alldocs. Up over here somewhere, db.alldocs. This is give me all the documents in the database. This is to get one particular one. We're going to access one particular document, one particular class in the database. Then we can do something with it. There's going to be a lot here, actually. So then I'm going to divide this. I'm going to split that uh, those parentheses up like that. And we have to say, well, what class are we talking about? We just ask the user for a class. So it'll be the class, comma. <clears throat> From the database, we're getting the particular class that the person typed into that box. And then after that, we would have uh, the result would be then a function callback with an error or a, or a result, as we've been seeing before. So we'll write here function callback, open close parentheses, open close curly brace. We've seen that sort of syntax before. I'm going to push that curly brace to its own line. The function callback, open close parentheses, open curly brace, close curly brace right there. No semicolon there technically because it's part of the same get. Open parentheses, close parentheses. And as we've seen several times already on our callback, these can be just about anything we want, but just to keep it um, consistent with what we've been doing, we've been calling it error comma, result. What we'll actually accomplish inside of that, so tab into that, we've uh, we've gotten the uh, we've gotten the the class uh, at this point, and then now that we have a focus on it, we want to uh, actually delete it. So then, next line here, we've got db dot remove. Open close parentheses. On that, we do have a semicolon there. And I'm going to divide that semicolon into the next line, like that. So what we're actually trying to remove, if we go back here, to remove... Well, previously, uh, up at the 
dot get, we were trying to get a particular class. So once we as once we confirm that we've got the class, then we can remove it. So now that's where that comes in here, remove, and we're saying result, remove result, because that's coming back from up here. If we are able to get a particular record from the database, a reference to it is stored in that result, and therefore I'm removing that result, that class. And this could also have the result of it uh, having an error or a result, a, a negative or a positive result. So after result, we'll do comma, same thing right as right above, function, callback, curly braces. It'll have basically the same thing, error or response. Result. I'm going to push that uh, curly brace down to the next line again. Uh, so we kind of got this little thing going on here. But um, that's why I open and close them right away so that I don't get confused there. Now, here we have either an error or a result. Either we have that we did delete the, 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 the class or, or we didn't. If we did delete the class, what I want to do then is remove it from the database. Technically it's been removed right now with dot remove, but then I want to update the table so now the table doesn't show that old class that doesn't exist anymore and I also want to clear the field where the person typed in the, the class to delete. Now if there is no class, if we're not if we're trying to delete class one two three but someone types one two three four that would be an error I want to deal with that possibility that I'm trying to delete a class that doesn't exist so this is where it comes in to make that decision either it's going to be a class that can be deleted or has been deleted or it won't or it's or it isn't there to delete so inside of the uh, callback uh, function we'll tab into there and we'll set up an if skeleton so we've got if open close parentheses open close curly brace either it's one thing or another so then we'll add else like that be careful here this is this closing curly brace goes with else this closing curly brace goes with if and this one was back over for the whole callback So here we're checking if we did get a result, if we did remove the class from the database, do the following. So in the if, we will complete that with result. If there is a result, if a result does exist, we got a result back, uh, the positive result. What we'll do inside the if is then say, uh, we'll access that input box that someone typed into and clear it, and then we'll reshow the new version of the table. So document.getElement by ID, and it's the ID called delete, CRN. We're going to say dot value. This time we're going to fill that uh, value with quote, end quote, semicolon. So that's basically we're clearing that box. The box had the class that the person typed in. Now we're saying if we did delete the class, let's empty that box. The person cannot delete, cannot select to delete that class anymore. They've already deleted it. Let's remove it from the screen. So by setting dot value equals quote quote, we fill it with nothing. Therefore, clearing it. And then on the next line, well, reload that table. It was, it'll still automatically show the same table that had the old data unless we show the new version of the table. And we've got a function that will show the the classes, which is which we call show classes. So 
will clear the input box and show the latest version of the classes, the, the, the table of classes. This is all part of the if statement, uh, checking for positive result. We were able to delete the class, do that. Well, if we didn't delete the class, there could be many possibilities why this failed. One of the most likely, most obvious, is that it's the wrong class. There's class 1, 2, 3, and someone is trying to delete class 1, 2, 2. So we'll assume that for the moment. That will happen under the else. So what we'll do is we'll, all, we'll clear the in, that input box one more time. So I'll do a little time saver here. Copy the line where we cleared the input box, copy it and paste it into else because we want to clear it again. We don't want people to keep trying to delete this, the class that doesn't exist. So just copy and paste that in from that, from line 76 to 79. And then to make it obvious, we will have a, a basic alert pop-up box that says some sort of uh, error. So we'll say alert. quotes will say the class CRN we're trying to tell them you typed in class 1 2 3 it doesn't exist so furthermore plus the class so we're telling them the class 1 2 3 doesn't exist we save the class that they're trying to delete in the class which we pulled up over there so we're saying the class 1 2 3 furthermore plus quotes does not exist. Uh, in these quotes, I would add a space there, does not exist. There's a space there so that this is not all run together as one sentence. The class, the class space does not exist. Try again. So a simple pop-up that tells the user this class doesn't exist, try again. And then it clears the box so that they don't try to continue to delete the class that doesn't exist. I also want to see as the developer, well, what's happening behind the scenes. So next line, we'll do a console log output simply to to tell me what is that error, that error which happens back here. What error is PouchDB giving me? We'll show it in the console. It might be, again, esoteric for the user, so it's coming into the console. So as I'm testing this, I might figure out the problem. I wouldn't really want to give that error to the regular user. It might be a big, scary error that they won't, have, uh, won't be able to do anything with. I believe at this point, then, now we can uh, save it and test it. Make sure you've got a couple of items in your database there. Um, try to delete one of your existing records if it works. Great. And then try to delete one that doesn't work. See if you can get that pop-up. See if you can get the if result and the else result. If it doesn't work, of course, part of the confusion, part of the problem that it doesn't work is that these right here are very confusing because we've got a curly brace opening one thing, closing another, opening another, and parentheses and all of that. That's why I tried to pause to say open close parentheses, and then we'll break it. Because technically this could all be one long line, and it would be really hard to read. This is a little harder, this is a little easier to read, but then you get this, that might happen. Let's see if mine works. Can, uh, first, I'll open the console. I don't have any pre-errors there. Good. Show classes right there. I'm going to try to delete class 1.1. One, one. Delete CRN. Um, it did it. It deleted class 1.1, one, one and it showed the table and re-showed the table, and there it is. So let's say I try to delete, and it also cleared the box. Let's say I'm trying to delete class 1.2.2.2.2.2. Two, 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 two. Delete CRN. Get a pop-up. The class CRN1222 does not exist. Try again. And then I get a very detailed error 
that I would not want to show to my users on the console log. Raise your hand if that worked. All right, cool. Let me bring my code back. Uh, anyone need a little help? So again, this gets the job done. Visually, it's not that elegant. Um, you know, I'd, I'd love to do it in the way that we often see in an app, where like we can swipe to, d to select delete, or if we don't have that, maybe a little toggle that we that we uh, activate a little uh, check mark and then delete. Right? There's many ways to do this, but at the moment, this is one of the ways that we will do this as just it works for the moment, and then we can update it a little later. Question. I just got to, I was wondering what it took to log that. And then I think I have a curly bracket in the wrong place. That's the show table in a class. That's, that's an auto itself. The other function, the delete function, is not part of that. And the curly bracket. What line number? Uh, I'm at line seven. But if, okay, this bracket goes with table show, show table of class. Mm -hmm. and I got the bracket down past the function delete class, so it's in the wrong place. Well, there is a curly brace that ends the show table of classes, definitely. Okay. And there's going to be another one that ends the delete class. Okay, so they're separate. They're not in the same. Yeah, they're not. They're not in. Yeah, it's a separate function. So I am then going to add to line 87 or so. That's that curly brace is the one that ends that particular function, the delete classes. So I should add a, a comment there and a delete classes function. So that was deleting a, a class. Uh, what about updating? What if I've uh, added a particular class, but I misspelled the instructor's name? We can do that as well, in the same sort of sense where uh, we will have the ability to edit the different uh, fields of this document. We can set that up as well. So in the similar sense, we're going to create some new buttons on screen, and then we will create a function that actually does the hard work. So let's back up uh, over to line uh, 68. Let's give ourselves a new line 68. We're going to add a little more to the string. So you see this trick, we're just adding more to the string so that it's all part of that string. So once we display it, those items show up. So 
we'll have str plus equals quotes semicolon and just kind of looking ahead um, I want this to be um, we're gonna have the we're gonna have the the fields and then the buttons so we're gonna divide this into uh, eventually into uh, columns with CSS and such so we'll set it up from the beginning uh, so in the quotes we're going to first add the BR tag this is break so that um, it's all going to be, it's going to kind of run together, so we're going to separate it a little bit. And to this break tag, we're going to add a little bit of simple inline style here, which will be single quotes there. Style equals clear colon both, semicolon. Uh, what that does is it just uh, forces a separation between the previous button and input box and these next ones that we're creating. So again, I caught myself there. Those are single quotes. We've always looked at style equals quote and quote, but this is single quotes right here. Careful there. And then we're going to continue that. Uh, we're going to create. Um, we're going to create two columns here. So we're going to do that with uh, with a div, uh, and then two inner divs. So a big outer div, and then two inner divs for left column, right column. So since we know we're going in that direction, we will create the div tags like this. Open and close div tags. We want a left column and a right column. Um, so we will actually create another div, another div pair, and then one more but not inside of that one after that one. Let me write it and then I'll explain. So we've got the, the larger parent div right here, which will be our whole um, amount of space that we have on screen. And then we'll have a left uh, column and a right column. So see that's the larger element and then left column, right column. So div slash div, div slash div, inside of div slash div. This will not automatically be nice and stylized. It'll work via CSS, of course. So uh, we will add some classes here so that when we create the, the CSS, then uh, it'll, it'll look pretty nice. So I'm going to back up to the first div right there and add a class, single quotes. And we'll call this div to call. This is a div that will be divided into two columns. It's a class. So we'll define our own CSS in a moment. And this class is being added to the first div after the break. And then as I said, we're going to have a left column and a right column. So here's our left column, here's our right column. We need to add classes to both of these as well, so that then via CSS we can uh, properly style them. So going to the second div here, we'll give that a class. We can call it left call. This is the left column of my, of my div layout. And then the right column needs the same sort of thing. So that div will be class equals uh, right call. So you should see the logic here before we fill it all in. We've got this larger div of two columns, div to call, and then the left column and the right column. And then within that one, we'll add some elements. And then within that one, we'll add some elements. And then we should have a nice and pretty well stylized uh, on-screen presentation. 
save that. So in my left column, between the two divs, get between those two divs, and we will create here a button. So that means the button tags. We're creating a button in the left column. The text inside of that will be update class because the point of this is that we will we've got an existent class that there might be some issue with it maybe wrong CRN number uh, wrong uh, instructor misspelling or something we want to update the class there's gonna be a button there in order for that to work then um, We'll add an on click. So this will be defining a function that doesn't uh, exist yet. Of course, we will uh, we will add it soon. But it's update class. Open close parentheses. That update class button. Once we click it, will will invoke the update class uh, function, which we'll define in a moment. And then on the right column, we're going to have three input fields. Uh, first of all, to select the CRN number so that we know which particular class we're dealing with. And if they choose to uh, update the instructor uh, field or the class title field, they could. So this will be on the right column. So I'll scroll a bit over here to the right column. And the right column, we will put in uh, an input the input tag of type text and here actually we will um, we will pre-populate the fields previously these fields have been empty uh, I want to pre-populate them for a reason that I'll explain in a moment. So we can add the value property right away. Previously, we've been doing something like get element by ID dot value. We've been capturing the value that someone types in. Here, we can actually fill the input boxes with a value from the beginning. So the value is going to be CRN. We're basically asking for the person to add a CRN value to that input box. And in order for us to access it via JavaScript, then it needs an ID. So ID equals, and we'll call that um, we'll call that update CRN. Now notice I I'm uh, keeping all of this in one long awkward line. Usually I've been dividing this into separate lines just to kind of show a little bit more on screen. This is an example where that, where that will not work. When we've got this string equals quote end quote, it actually does very weird things if we try to break this up into separate lines the way we're writing it here. So it is one long awkward uh, line that we're not done yet, but from the, from the testing and such that I've been doing, uh, it's, it's, it's kind of necessary for the moment. This is one of the input boxes. We need to add two more because we, a person can update the CRN or the instructor or the class title. So after that input box, we'll add another input. You know what, let's just copy and paste this because we're just going to redo the same thing two more times. This input box, we need an input box of type text. We're going to change its value and we're going to change its ID, but we should just copy that whole sort of a template for that input box, copy it and paste it two more times after this existent one. So I'll copy one time, two times.
And the first one is uh, value CRN, update CRN. The second one we will call uh, its value in there will be class. And we're going to be updating, or we'll say class title. And we'll be updating, we'll do update title. So the text that appears in the box will say class title and its ID so that we can access it via JavaScript will be update title. And then on the last input box then it'll be um, instructor and we will then, then be updating instructor. So the third value is instructor and we have update. I'll just do update inst instead of instructor. So that's kind of a lot, but let me see if I uh, if I test this, what it looks like so far. See if I'm on the right track. Yeah. So what it's supposed to look like is if I show classes. We've got the delete, which I can confirm is working. And then let's say we wanted to update. That was actually instructor Smith, not Smath. So what I want to do is I want to fix that. So using this here, well, I need to tell the app which particular class are we are we editing with CRN. So it would be CRN one two three, and then we can change class title. Or instructor. So instead of instructor Smith, we would type Smith. Click the button to update class, and then it would update. Obviously, we're not there yet, but this is what it should look like visually at the moment. And it is that long string, which of course I'll add into my network folder when when during our first break. But uh, hopefully, you got something like that. How many of you does it look like this so far? Or close? Okay. It's not quite there. Um, we'll have the, uh, the help in a bit, but what would come next is, okay, if we've got these input boxes and the button to say update the class, now we need to define that function, which you call update class, in order for this to actually work. So remember, if we back up a little bit over here, we've got um, update class. We need to define that update class function. So. We've got delete classes, line 72. I'm going to scroll down past the end of delete classes, line 90, and we will define the function delete class. Remember, did I call it delete class? Delete classes? I don't remember. No problem. I just copy and paste. <clears throat> so even if you misspell something, as long as you consistently misspell it, it'll still work. While I'm here, I might as well add at the end here, double slash, end of update class function. This is going to be another long one. All right, so if a person did or did not type into those boxes something, we want to capture that anyway. Uh, we want to capture what they typed into those boxes. So that'll be very similar to when we deleted the class. We need to create a variable, three of them actually, so that then we can capture the value that is in those boxes. We'll need to do the db.get again. So we had previously, let's get a document. Then we can delete it. Now we're going to get a document so that we can update it. So we will create here VARs again. We'll call the CRN. I'm not done with that line yet, but I'm on a roll. so. It var the title, and then var 
the inst. Each of these will do the same thing where it's equals document dot get element by ID. I did a tab there which you don't need to uh, simply for for effect. I'll explain in a moment. They're all going to do the same sort of thing here. All three of those are going to request a particular ID, its value. So just a little thing we could do here. If I copy and paste that in, then I just need to fill it in. And again, I did that tab, which is completely optional, just so that it lines up kind of pretty. Sometimes looking at pretty code is nice. If we didn't do that, there may be you know, that ragged edge, which doesn't matter really, but aesthetically sometimes if you want to do something like that, that's valid. And so we've got those three input boxes that we created a moment ago, which I believe we called update CRN, update title, and update inst. So we've got these three variables that we're creating, which we're populating from those input boxes that we created previously up there when we added to the string. And then we'll actually do something with it on the next line. We're going to set ourselves up again with db.get, like we did before. So next line, db.get. That has an open close parentheses, semicolon. And we saw previously, well, that's not the half of it, so divide that up there. <coughs> so on that line, uh, we're talking about the CRN, comma, same as before, um, function callback, open close, open curly brace, close curly brace, just like before. So I'll get a little ahead of myself at that point because we did it a moment ago. It's very similar to the previous one. We need to set ourselves up here to reference a particular object in the database, so same as before. So first we'll deal if there's an error, meaning uh, the class that you're trying to edit doesn't exist. So that will have the if-else statement again. If curly brace close, else open close. So we're adding the if-else as part of the function callback. Open curly brace, close curly brace. And all of that is inside of the get, open parentheses, close parentheses. And all of that is inside of the update class function. So the first thing I'm going to check here for if did we get an error? Because either we have an error or we have a result. So we're going to check here if. Do we have an error? If we do have an error, do the following. Or else we didn't get an error, so do the else. Error. So inside of the if, the that result that yes, we did get an error, we're going to do um, 
four things. We're going to clear each of those three input boxes because they typed uh, something that was not valid, and then we'll give them a pop-up that says that CRN that you're trying to edit doesn't doesn't exist to give them another chance. So what we'll do here for a time saver, I'm going to copy that copy that line up there where we're referencing the particular element. Copy that and paste it. But we don't end it. We're then going to say equals quote end quote. And we want to clear those three boxes. There might be something in them, but here I'm going to clear the three of them. So I can copy this line. This line, which is a little more complete of what I wanted to do, I can copy this line and paste it two times. And instead we're doing clear the update title and the update inst. there's an error, clear those boxes. And then next line we will give an alert that says that class that you're trying to edit doesn't exist. Very similar to what we did on the previous one on the delete classes. So alert. Let's say the class, we can probably just copy and paste it exactly. Might as well do that. It's the exact same line up here. Alert, the class CRN doesn't exist. Uh, except for one little change. It's not, we didn't call it the class this time, we called it the CRN. So this part of the if statement is for dealing with that we got an error. That class um, didn't exist, so we should also output here to the console for ourselves. What is that error? If we didn't get an error, that would mean that we are safe to actually update that record. So that's in the else section. And the way we would update a record is we would put new data into the existing object. So we'll do db.put, open close parentheses, semicolon. And we're going to put something into the database. And normally we would be putting a brand new, a brand new class, a, a brand new record. But if we provide an existing record as well as a revision, we can update an existing one without it getting giving us an error. So we'll be doing db dot put, and then to further set this up, we'll do this we're going to feed it. It's not just the it's not just this class, the CRN that we're updating, because we could be updating the instructor field or the title field, and we definitely need to include a new revision. It's a new version of that old field. So we have to encase it in the curly braces like a JSON string. Um, so Divide that, those curly braces, like that. So those curly braces are part of the various um, fields or options that I'm going to apply to put. So backing up here, uh, the very first thing is underscore ID. Uh, remember, everything that we put into PouchDB has to have an ID. 
So here we're, we're trying to specify which particular ID, which particular class. So underscore ID colon, well it's the CRN, the one I've been talking about, the one that I've, that I've asked the user to, to supply. Comma, enter, this one's new, underscore rev. This is the revision, so that there's no conflicts. I'm trying to update an existing record, so it needs a new revision. We never had to deal with this previously because we were creating a brand new record. So then a brand new revision was added to it at that moment. Once we try to update an existing one, we have to then provide a new revision. And the way we can do it is, um, I might have to double check this once we've done it, but we'll write then here uh, result dot underscore rev. This result should be coming from that result up there. Comma, next line. We can also change the title. Remember this. Remember every class is made out of an ID, a title, and an instructor. So here, title, this is coming from whatever the title was supplied, comma. And finally, we have inst, which is coming from the inst. So all of those are part of this curly brace, which is this JSON object. This JSON, is that redundant? JSON object. Um, and so all of this is being used to update an existing record. Then after the comma, we have the same that we've seen before. Function callback. Did that fail or did that, uh, did that work? So this is line 107. After the comma, we have function callback. That's got an open close parentheses, and an open close curly brace. And that will have an error or a result. I'll divide those curly braces just like I've been doing all along. And this is slightly different than we've seen before. I kept this on the same line. does not matter. We could also push that to its own line and have even more of those indents, but just leave it for the moment. And so here we would do that whole if else, if an error, or else a result. And just to see if it's all working, we'll, we'll just do a very simple if uh, without the else. Because I really only care if there's an error. Oh well, yeah, I kept that all on one line, but that could have easily been divided, and we have even more of these you know, stair-step sort of effect here. This is that if I didn't do an else, I'm only caring to see if we get an error. If we do, show that in the console. I think at this point, if everything is okay, we should save it and run it. Uh, and let's try to then update a class. I have to double check my code. Line 104. Let me run it like this, and then let me check, and if it doesn't work, let me fix something. So I've got, I've got class 1, 2, 3, so I'm going to say I'm going to update class 1, 2, 3, which should actually be with Instructor Smith. Yeah. So now we've got Instructor Smith. Let's say class 2, 2, 2. Instructor Jones, update class, Instructor Jones. And so that we've seen that before, dot put, when we first added something to the database, but now the big 
difference is that we're also adding a new revision number, a new version of that record. And so it seems to be working. I'm going to save that, and then it's uh, perhaps a good time for a break. I'm going to put this code in the network folder if you want to see it. Um, we'll do 10 minutes, 7.15. We'll be back at 7.25. And uh, this is working pretty well. I think then it's time to then put it into our, into our app, back into our device. So uh, if this worked, great. And what you should then start to do is uh, set up your virtual device or real device so when we come back so we can add it to our device and proceed from there. Question? Okay, I'll help you one moment. Let me put my code in the folder.